Hello, warm welcome to today's talk, Thursday the 20th of July. Now, I'm going to be looking at terminal events following a particular injection on today's uh, video. Now, I wasn't going to do this, but um, the words of youth came to my mind, um, written by the Nobel laureate himself, and uh, I think it's just necessary to be uh, as upfront about this as possible. And uh, if I don't see you for a while, thank you for watching recently. Let's look at some pictures to start us off. First of all, this is from a composite study of those that are no longer with us after a certain injection. Um, so it, here we have a patient here. Now, this is the spike protein that's shown up here in orange. This is in the heart tissue of uh, patients that are sadly no longer with us. And, and we see it there again. And uh, that is the spike protein, and it's got a, a very strong temporal correlation with the injection, as we'll see. And here's another one here. Again, we see the orangey colour in the heart muscle where there's not supposed to be any. Now, we know this can occur as a result of COVID, and, and the authors were well aware of this. So this, this patient here had SARS coronavirus too. He was positive, and he did have that as well. But of course, the authors knew how to differentiate between spike protein alone and spike protein with other um, with other components from, from the virus. Not so much the authors, but the, the pathologists that the authors were uh, uh, putting together on, the, on this one. So pretty incontrovertible, really. It's there in, it's a photograph. It's like, a, it's not black and white. It's, uh, it's stained and orange, isn't it? It's purple and orange, but the, the evidence is there. And this also shows uh, inflammatory changes. So as well as the spike protein there, the, there's inflammatory changes. And this shows the, uh, the, um, the CD4 cells, the T helper lymphocytes. And we see these here. Now, again, these are in myocardial tissue, in the heart tissue of people that are no longer with us. And these, these brownish orangey blobs simply should not be there. There is no place these inflammatory cells should simply not be there but yet they are in these three uh, specimens. This is pretty strong evidence. It's post-mortem evidence. It's about the strongest you can get. So the idea is that this damage is part of the heart. Here we see the wall of the left ventricle, the wall of the right ventricle. And if the wall of the heart is damaged, then what happens is it becomes electrically unstable and can start giving off hundreds of electrical impulses. The heart muscle tries to contract with these, but it can't and you end up with a rapid, uncoordinated contraction. One form that they uh, found in this study was this first one, which is called ventricular tachycardia, and this one, which is called uh, ventricular fibrillation. And of course, without treatment, these patients will uh, go on to leave us uh, pretty shortly uh, after. Now, let's get straight on and look at this data. Now, this is from a preprint. So this hasn't been peer-reviewed, but it's been reviewed by senior doctors and pathologists, and I've read it, and it's actually a pretty good study. It uses standard methodology to collect the data. So let's look at it now and uh, see what happens. So autopsy, post-mortem, exactly the same thing. Proven uh, COVID vaccine-induced uh, myocarditis. Now, the authors say, do check it out for yourself. Do download the PDF. It's all there. COVID-19 vaccines have been linked to myocarditis, which in some circumstances can be... This uh, systematic review aims to investigate potential causal links between COVID-19 vaccines and from myocarditis using post-mortem or autopsy uh, analysis. I just have to plug my camera in. There we go. Um, now... Um, a systematic review, so it's a systematic review of all published autopsies involving COVID-19 vaccine related myocarditis. So by definition of its uh, autopsy, the individual is no longer uh, is no longer with us. Through all the way to July, 3rd of July, 2023, so bang up to date. All, all, all autopsy studies that included COVID-19 vaccine induced myocarditis were put were, 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 as a possible cause of, uh, were included. Causality in each case was determined by three independent uh, cardiac pathology, uh, people with cardiology and pathology expertise. So three independent reviewers looked at this. So, of course, 
we have to determine the difference between a, a correlation that this adverse event happened after vaccination and the vaccine caused the event. And that's the whole point of this study. The authors are claiming to have demonstrated clear causality. That's what makes this study quite profound. So the initial identified quite a lot of studies, but after screening the inclusion and exclusion criteria, 14 papers, 28 autopsies. Now this might not sound many, but of course most are simply not uh, recorded. And of course in the vast majority of cases, um, autopsies were simply not performed. Or if they were performed, the appropriate tests weren't done. So the cardiovascular system was the only, only system in, involved in 26 of these cases. Two other cases involved multi-system inflammatory uh, disease where many organs were involved. So that was the graphic there. This uh, section here is only cardiac. This section here is cardiac and other organs involved. The rest, the larger proportion, is uh, only cardiac, only the heart involved. So it seems that for some reason um, the heart is being targeted particularly or, of course, the patients that came into this sample group, remember these are patients that are no longer with us, they're the ones where that were affected by the heart. Because if you have a bit of uh, kidney disease or a bit of liver disease, hopefully you'll remain with us for quite some time after that and we can treat that. Um, but if it's, it was the heart, it can stop really quite uh, quickly. Now, the days after vaccination uh, to the adverse event that we're looking at here... Um, some patients had the adverse event on the same day. Uh, one, two, three, quite a few on the third day. But all the way through to this is day 36 here. If, you can't, if you're watching on your phone, you can't see it. So patients had this adverse event, no longer being with us, from day zero to day 36. The most common being on day three. And this was broken down quite extensively. And as you would expect, the problem was worst in young men. Not exclusively, but it was worse in young men, as we already know. So another point of consistency there, really. We established that all 28 adverse events were causally linked to COVID-19 vaccination by independent adjudication. In other words, the adverse event was caused by the vaccine. Their conclusion, that there's a temporal relationship, internal and external consistency, that this is the case. Now, um, individuals no longer with us with known COVID vaccine-induced myocarditis. So they looked at the patho... Uh, patho that's completely spelled wrong. It should be pathophysiological mechanisms. Uh, I wrote a book on that. I should know how it's spelled. It's, avail it's, av it's available for free download if you, want to, uh, if you want to avail yourself. I'll put the link. Pathophysiology. Um, um, so pathophysiological mechanisms made sense. Uh, related excess deaths made sense. Um, Complemented with autopsy findings, again, it was consistent. It was independent adjudication. Application of the Bradford Hill criteria that I've looked at many times on this channel that help us to adjudicate between a correlation and causality and the Bradford Hill criteria which were used initially to determine that smoking caused lung cancer then that smoking caused heart disease and then that asbestos caused mesothelioma that these are well tried and tested criteria were fulfilled were fulfilled uh, in these uh, in these cases so again accumulation of evidence overall epidemiology of vaccine and myocarditis all taken into account, direct quote from the authors, suggests there is a high likelihood of a causal link between COVID-19 vaccinations and from suspected myocarditis. In cases where sudden and unexpected has occurred in a vaccinated person, so, so they're basically saying that these two go together. Um, they say urgent investigation is required for the purposes of uh, risk stratification. Who the heck shouldn't we be injecting? Young men being a fairly obvious candidate at the moment, I would have thought. Uh, and uh, mitigation. Mitigation. How can we stop this adverse event occurring? In order to reduce the, pop uh, the population occurrence of uh, unfortunate 
COVID-19 vaccine-induced myocarditis. Most cases had symptoms consistent with myocarditis prior to chest pain, effort intolerance, for example. Uh, Choi et al., for example, 22-year-old man from Korea, autopsy showed intense inflammation and destruction of cardiac tissue, including the conducting system. Now, <coughs> the conducting system is what uh, generates the, um, the electrical activity for the heart to uh, contract, transmits it through the atria, transmits it down through the ventricles. And of course, if that's not working, you'll get a con condition called heart block, where the impulse is not going through the heart. Um, other cases had no reported symptoms before death, perhaps even more alarming. Um, perhaps even more alarming. Let's draw a picture here. Uh, this is a flagpole. This is a flag. And this flag is red. This is a red flag. To me, this can be happening. Uh, Gil et al. reported two boys aged 16 and 17. 16 and 17 year old boys. It's just incredible. Who, a few days after mRNA injection, while asleep at home, autopsy revealed patchy inflammation, suggesting that the sudden arrhythmia, the ventricular fibrillation, ventricular tachycardia, probably ventricular fibrillation, had occurred. So the patchy inflammation, you see, you don't with the heart you can get a lot of the heart uh, muscle involved and the heart becomes floppy you can get what you call a dilated myocardiac uh, myocarditis but then sometimes just little bits of the heart are involved and if little bits are involved that's still enough to act as what we call a ectopic focus a focus of electrical activity where there shouldn't be a focus of electrical activity firing out lots of impulses and that causes this chaotic waveform which is associated which is ventricular fibrillation and of course has no uh, cardiac output resulting in death of the brain a few minutes later so there we are um uh we'll leave that there um god willing i'll see you in the next day or two <laughs> but we'll see but really uh you know the, the songs you learn when you're young How many times can a man turn his head and pretend he just doesn't see? Some things just have to be said. The entire scientific community, of course, is open to uh, reply. I have been in touch with a couple of the authors of this paper, actually. Um, and there are more, there is much more to this story. Um, some of their work had been on uh, other preprint servers and later retracted, for example. Um so more to come on this story um, if I can communicate with you in future. If I can't, uh, thank you for watching today and thank you for the times you've watched in the past. <laughs>